We're on the cusp of two dominant conference finals victories by arguably the two teams most heavily doubted. But while that's still going on, most teams are at home preparing for what is going to be a very busy offseason across the board. One such team in particular is actually the defending champion Golden State Warriors, and after the ridiculously up and down season they just had, they have quite a few things to address, which brings us to today's video. Media outlet Bleacher Report just published an article where they proposed three hypothetical blockbuster deals that the Warriors could try to make happen this summer in order to get themselves back in the mix. And as always, I'm here to go through each proposal analyzing why or why not the teams involved would want to do the deal, who benefits the most from it, and whether or not the move is even realistic in the first place. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate now with that being said, let's begin. The first proposal from the article is between the Warriors and the Toronto Raptors, and in it the Warriors receive OG Ananobi and Chris Boucher in exchange for Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga. Immediately, in year one of Jordan Poole's new contract extension, the Warriors seem to already be regretting giving him the deal, and now they're stuck in a tough spot regarding what to do about it. Last summer, the Warriors were at a bit of a crossroads, where three of their key pieces were approaching a looming free agency, but they really only had the money to max two of them. Draymond Green has been a vital core member of the team's dynasty all the way through, while Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole represented the next generation of Warriors basketball to lock up. They were legitimately struggling to decide which of these three to prioritize, but then when Draymond lashed out and swung on Jordan Poole in training camp, his public perception tanked and the front office's knee-jerk reaction was to choose Poole over Draymond in extension talks, along with Andrew Wiggins. Well, this year Jordan Poole took a significant step backwards and now he might have one of the worst contracts in the association, making him very difficult to move if they wanted to try to find an upgrade. Luckily for the Warriors though, the Raptors seem to be a team on the brink of a restart, and OG Ananobi could be hitting the market. Ananobi, to put it simply, is exactly what the Warriors need, as one of their biggest areas of weakness during this playoff run was their perimeter defense. OG Ananobi just so happens to be one of, if not the best, perimeter defenders in the NBA, and he's also made over 38% of his threes four seasons in a row. He's also on the last guaranteed year of his contract, so while I agree that a pool for Ananobi swap isn't exactly balanced by any means, there are a few reasons why I think the Raptors would be tempted by this offer. For one, Jordan Poole may be flawed and a bit inefficient, but he's still just 23 years old, and if they're about to rebuild, his potential is still definitely worth taking a swing on. The same can be said about Jonathan Kuminga, who has the raw physical tools to make a difference on the defensive end, but he fell completely out of the Warriors rotation in the playoffs and probably needs a fresh start in a situation with less pressure to reach his full potential, which is what the Raptors could offer in this situation. It's not a perfect trade by any means, but both teams do benefit to differing degrees, and I wouldn't be surprised to see something like this actually go down. The next proposal from the article is between the Warriors and the Toronto Raptors again funnily enough, and in it the Warriors receive Pascal Siakam and Thaddeus Young in exchange for Jordan Poole, Kevon Looney, Jonathan Kuminga, and the number 19 pick in this year's draft. Okay, so the last proposal we just discussed I could at least see some logic behind, but now I'm starting to think that the author just gets off on imagining the Warriors taking advantage of the Raptors. Maybe he's a Warriors fan still sour about the 2019 NBA Finals, but this proposal is definitely where the line needs to be drawn. Yes, as I said in the last excerpt, the Raptors might go full rebuild mode this offseason, which means a cleaning of the house may be on the horizon, which would mean that Pascal Siakam could also become available, but his situation and OG Ananobi's situation are drastically different, and quite frankly the Warriors don't have the means of pulling something like this off in my opinion. At the end of the day, Jordan Poole is not a valuable asset at this point in time, and he sure as hell isn't good enough to headline a trade for a perennial all-star two-way forward like Siakam. Kevon Looney is an outstanding rebounder and defender, Kuminga has potential of course, and a 
first round pick thrown in isn't bad by any means, but Siakam is actually one of the best forwards in the league, and if he were to hit the market, then other teams could absolutely top this offer. Like OG Ananobi, he is entering the last year of his contract, which I will admit does reduce the price tag of Siakam a little bit with the uncertainty of his impending free agency, but you would imagine that whoever trades for him would do so with the knowledge that Siakam would be committed to signing an extension with them, and that kind of agreement would make the sweepstakes to acquire him heat right back up. And finally, the last proposal in the article is between the Warriors and the Minnesota Timberwolves, and in it the Warriors receive Carl Anthony Towns in exchange for Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kuminga, Patrick Baldwin, and the number 19 pick in this year's draft. Okay, so right off the bat, it needs to be said that every proposal in this article has gotten progressively less and less realistic, with this one probably being borderline delusional for Warriors fans to expect. It is true that the Timberwolves are in a weird spot right now, though. They thought they were going all in on championship contention last offseason, when they unloaded pretty much all of their assets in exchange for Rudy Gobert, but then reality hit, their first season together happened, and not much at all changed for them. They were still a play-in team, they still got sent home in the first round, and the only difference is that they now have two centers that clearly don't fit very well alongside each other in the lineup. Now they've got no more money to spend, barely any tradable assets, and a mediocre roster at best. Cat has been the face of the franchise since he's been drafted, and in his career he's established himself as one of the most talented offensive big men in the league, but the cold hard truth is that his time in Minnesota hasn't resulted in any kind of success, with zero playoff series victories, and at this point it's smarter to try to build around Anthony Edwards, so Cat is the team's most valuable asset. The team would be foolish to not at least test the market and see what kind of offers they could get for Towns, no matter how painful it may be for some of the fans to have to see him go, but I'll say right now that this offer from the Warriors would not be enough to move the needle. Somehow Bleacher Report's offer for Siakam on an expiring contract had better return than this offer for Towns, who is younger and is locked into a contract for five more years. Towns' offensive ability would without a doubt be fully unleashed in a system like the Warriors, and defensively the team has done well to maximize players' abilities there, but if they actually want Towns, they need to cough up a hell of a lot more to even get the Timberwolves to hear them out. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about these potential trade offers for the Warriors. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.